Today, Blue Origin is often the laughing stock of the space community. Many people like to point out how Blue Origin has yet to make any game-changing progress while having essentially unlimited funding from Jeff Bezos. Ironically though, Blue Origin was founded way back in September of 2000, which is almost two years earlier than SpaceX. But over the first 10 to 15 years of its life, most people didn't even know it existed. Recently though, as SpaceX has garnered worldwide attention for their outlandish feats, we are seeing more and more people look into the private space industry, which has shined light onto Blue Origin. On top of this, Jeff Bezos just announced that he is going to be stepping down from being Amazon CEO to fully focus on Blue Origin. So, does Blue Origin actually have a chance of meaningfully competing against SpaceX? Well, starting off, the first thing I wanted to get out of the way is that neither Jeff Bezos nor Blue Origin is a joke. We all know that clip where Jeff Bezos talks about throwing away a Boeing 747 after using it, just like Elon Musk. And there's also that clip where Elon Musk is like, Jeff who? But jokes aside, Jeff Bezos is not a joke by any means. Just like Elon Musk, he too has gone through massive hurdles throughout his career, which he has successfully overcome time and time again. For instance, during the dot-com bubble, Amazon stock crashed 95% from $114 to $6. Meanwhile, over half of all internet companies went bankrupt. Jeff Bezos though cleverly managed to pivot to cloud services with AWS, which allowed Amazon to grow into the behemoth that it is today. With that being said, let's take a look at what Blue Origin is working on today, starting with Project Kuiper. Project Kuiper is basically Blue Origin slash Amazon's version of Starlink. Through Kuiper, they hope to provide global broadband internet by launching thousands of satellites into space. Neither Blue Origin nor SpaceX were the first to think of this idea. Satellite-based internet has been around for decades, and there are even full-on companies dedicated to providing satellite-based internet like Viasat. The primary area in which Blue Origin and SpaceX hope to improve upon the competition is implementation and execution. You see, most satellite internet connections today are extremely slow, as they rely on just a couple of satellites that are far above the Earth's surface. Given that SpaceX and Blue Origin have the ability to launch satellites themselves, they can afford to launch thousands of smaller satellites that orbit as close to the surface as possible, thus providing much better internet than the competition. SpaceX has already launched dozens of Starlink missions, and are currently in the process of launching a beta version of Starlink. Meanwhile, though Blue Origin slash Amazon have started testing some prototype satellites, they have yet to launch a significant amount of satellites for Kuiper. This isn't that big of a deal though, as other than SpaceX, there is no competition. NASA, Virgin Galactic, and Rocket Lab aren't looking to get into the satellite internet business anytime soon. So it's really just Blue Origin and SpaceX. Aside from this, Amazon benefits from massive leverage, which SpaceX does not have. Amazon already has over 150 million Prime members worldwide, and I'd say that it's pretty likely that Amazon tries to leverage its customer base to their advantage. Amazon is already known for outstanding customer service, so if Amazon pushes their satellite internet offering to their customers, it's likely that many will be quick to jump ship from AT&T and Spectrum and other popular broadband internet providers who don't have very good customer service. Something else to keep in mind is that Amazon will be able to subsidize the cost of Kuiper, unlike SpaceX. SpaceX has to cover all of the costs of developing and launching Starlink just from the revenue that they receive from Starlink customers. As a result, Starlink is on the pricier side, coming in at $99 a month. With Amazon on the other hand, it's very possible they'll be able to undercut SpaceX especially when it comes to Prime members. For instance, they might be able to charge $80 or even $60 a month and to make up the difference through all the purchases the given Prime member makes on Amazon throughout the year. As you can see, it's likely that Kuiper will have a pretty good shot against Starlink despite their late entrance. Moving on, we have Blue Origin's other major side project, which is their Lunar Landers. In this realm, it seems like Blue Origin is actually in the lead by quite an amount. Blue Origin revealed their Lunar Lander, Blue Moon, nearly two years ago at this point, and it was almost already complete way back then. NASA has since already accepted Blue Moon as an option to get cargo to the moon. Aside from this, they're also working on a human landing system in conjunction with Lockheed Martin and a couple of other companies. Meanwhile, NASA has given three companies the opportunity to help them on their 2024 moon mission, which includes SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dynetics. SpaceX is planning on developing a lunar starship that can be used to land on the moon. But currently, they're still in the early stages of developing Starship itself. And I'm not quite sure if a lunar starship will be crew ready by 2024. 
At the same time, I'm also not sure if NASA will be ready to launch the moon by 2024 in the first place. So, maybe SpaceX does still have a chance in scooping up this contract. As for Dynetics, they're taking a completely different approach than SpaceX and Blue Origin with their lunar lander. They've prioritized crew convenience and practicality when designing their lander, which sits very close to the ground. However, they also face one major obstacle similar to SpaceX, which is that their lunar lander requires refueling in space. Dynetics is hoping to achieve this ambitious goal by 2024, but it's definitely going to be difficult to say the least. Considering this, it looks like Blue Origin is the furthest ahead when it comes to lunar lander development, and they no doubt have the simplest design. So, they have a pretty good shot at being the ones helping NASA get people back to the moon. Now that we've covered their side endeavors, let's jump into their rocket starting with New Shepard. New Shepard is a relatively small rocket designed to simply carry six passengers into space for 11 minutes. With New Shepard, Blue Origin hopes to provide researchers as well as space enthusiasts the opportunity to experience just a little bit of space. Blue Origin has been testing this rocket for several years now, and they have been saying that crewed missions are just around the corner for quite some time now. But given the stellar track history of the New Shepard, I'm pretty confident that it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Anyways, like any other rocket, New Shepard launches vertically, but after it reaches a certain altitude, its booster disconnects and comes back to land on the surface. Meanwhile, the crew capsule continues upwards and spends 11 minutes in space before falling back into the Earth's atmosphere and slowly landing using parachutes. This will be extremely easy to reuse and quite appealing to individuals interested in space tourism. SpaceX isn't really interested in space tourism, like, at all. So, the main competition for Blue Origin here is Virgin Galactic. Blue Origin hasn't revealed pricing yet, but we do know that a space flight with Virgin Galactic costs $250,000 per ticket. So, I'd assume that Blue Origin's price is about the same as well. The main difference between the two offerings is really just the method in which you get to space. Do you want to experience a traditional vertical rocket launch, or would you rather have a more flight-like experience? Given that that's really just a matter of personal preference, it's likely that Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic will dominate the space tourism industry. And finally, that brings us onto Blue Origin's most significant project, New Glenn. The New Glenn is Blue Origin's crown jewel, and it is their attempt to rival SpaceX's Starship rocket. Blue Origin expects that New Glenn will have a payload capacity of 45 metric tons in low Earth orbit. To put that in perspective, Starship is expected to have 100 metric tons of payload capacity. So, Starship will also be far ahead of New Glenn, but it looks like New Glenn will be the closest competition. Blue Origin mainly hopes to use New Glenn to establish sustainable travel between the Earth and the Moon. At the end of the day, this video isn't really a question of will Blue Origin survive? Jeff Bezos has more than enough money to run Blue Origin for decades to come. Rather, the real issue this video is addressing is whether or not Blue Origin will emerge to become a major player within the space industry. Right now, it seems like they are getting crushed by SpaceX in terms of innovation, and that SpaceX will overpower them moving forward as well. However, as we saw in this video, this is really not the case because of one major underlying factor, which is that Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk have completely different visions for space. Sure, they're both developing reusable rockets and trying to raise money by launching satellite internet. But that's really where the similarities end. Here's the thing, Elon Musk's primary goal is to expand humans outside of Earth and make humans a multi-planetary species. Conversely, Jeff Bezos' primary goal is to utilize space to enrich our lives here on Earth. You see, Jeff Bezos points out that the conditions everywhere outside of the Earth are terrible for human life. The truth is, Mars is a super cold, desolate, rusty planet. Establishing a convenient form of life on Mars will no doubt take hundreds of years, if not thousands. As a result, Jeff Bezos thinks it makes more sense to use space to solve problems on Earth as opposed to trying to colonize other planets. For instance, he thinks it would be wise to move manufacturing and energy production into space. That way, we wouldn't be polluting the Earth. This doesn't mean that he doesn't want humans to colonize other planets though. In fact, he wants to establish a permanent lunar base. However, this would be more for research and potentially tourism purposes as opposed to permanent living purposes. This fundamentally different approach has left Blue Origin and SpaceX on radically different paths, which are both extremely important. So, in the end, does Blue Origin actually have a chance in the space industry? In my opinion, the answer is absolutely, as SpaceX and Blue Origin are more like puzzle pieces that fit together and fulfill different purposes in the space industry, as opposed to something like NASA vs Russia during the Cold War. Do you guys agree that Blue Origin has a bright future? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys think Blue Origin deserves more credit than they receive. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, 
I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.